One thing that I think I have that, that certainly Peggy has told me, I have a never-ending curiosity. There aren't many things that I don't want to know something about. Uh, I'm always kind of ashamed I don't know more as much as I know, but I really like learning about things. I'm a firm believer that we are who we are primarily by circumstances beyond our control. I didn't pick my parents. I didn't pick where I was raised. I didn't pick the culture that I was born up in. I didn't pick, pick, pick the, the gene pool I have. Uh, I, sure, I made certain decisions, but I don't give myself such credit as thinking that I had such, such wisdom to make those decisions. Those, those decisions were basically planted in me by the environment that I grew up in. I grew up in America. Uh, I grew up with parents that loved themselves very much. Um, so what wonderful opportunities that I had, they were all wonderful opportunities. Uh, I was healthy, I've been healthy. Uh, I, learned, I learned to take care of my health. Um, I have just, had a lot of wonderful things happen to me. Most of what I have was given to me in one form or another. I probably would have been happier had I joined the Marine Corps rather than the Navy, but who knows? Generally speaking, I have no regrets. Peggy and I are very blessed with children because Peggy raised the kids. I worked all the time. That goes back to this idea that I was so afraid of being a failure because I'd been such a failure in elementary school that I, I mean, I had a, and I think only as I've gotten into my late 60s have I gotten so I don't have any fear of failure. Peggy and I have had so many successes in our life. And our kids were always a joy to us. I never really left work. I began to back off of it. I was going to school over at CPCC. Uh, I was taking an afternoon, a day off and fooling around with golf. Uh, I like what I'm doing now. Uh, I hope it lasts. I like it. Matter of fact, it's, the biggest problem I'm having at age 72 is not having time to do the things I want to do. We traveled, went to, went to Italy. I don't know how many times I've been to Europe. Went to Russia. Uh, went to Singapore, Hong Kong, well, um, China. We were in China in 87. Hawaii any number of times. You know, we were doing what we should do. Our being children of the Depression, well, we don't really remember the Depression. We were born in the middle of it. It was always a question of Wealth and security to us was based on savings. And I don't think we ever lived beyond our means. But even though we lived on the edge, what we did begin to do that was extravagant to some degree was to spend money on art. And it's another one of those things that through the luck of marriage, you end up moving together in the same direction. I got started doing pots, doing ceramics, um, right at 14 years ago this summer. And I went to Penland that first year, and my pottery has kind of advanced since then. It's been a lot of fun, a lot of joy, a real um, outlet for artistic expression. Just like Peg has had her writing, uh, I can't write, so um, I've been doing things with my hand. And it has really been wonderful. And um, I've got a studio here, and I've got a studio in, um, up in Linville. About the only accolades I got in grammar school was for drawing. But um, and I used to build model airplanes and boats and stuff like that. But pottery became just kind of a, a real joy to me. And I hope that I can do it for the rest of my life. I like being a grandparent, especially with the wonderful grandchildren I have. 
and they give me a lot of joy. I am certainly not a smothering grandfather. I want them to have some of the wonderful memories that I have of my grandfather. Uh, I have tried to spend time with each one of them. I have tried to get to know them better and for them to know me. And I've tried to be very open to their being able to discuss things with me that they might not discuss with their parent. And I think as they've gotten older that they have, uh, I'm not particularly bashful about talking with them. And uh, I hope that they know they can discuss things with me that never go any further. So uh, I love them all. I love each and every one of them in a very special way. And I love taking them back down to the beach where we're all there together. I want to throw more pots. I want to learn how to do different kills. Uh, I'd like to get better at golf. There are books I want to read that I haven't gotten around to reading. Uh, I'd love to go back and take some certain college courses. I never had a course in philosophy. I never took many of the humanities. I think if I had time, I'd go over to see the top people over at CPCC, I had at UNCC and say, I don't care what the subject is, tell me your most, most outstanding professors. Give me three of their most outstanding professors. What if they teach, I'll take that class. I have learned that we receive what we give. If we give love and understanding, we receive it. Likewise, we know we're wealthy when we're giving money away. If you find money to give away to worthy causes, you're going to feel wealthy. Um, and that's true regardless of why you might be on the socioeconomic bracket. Um, Peggy's mother never had a whole lot, but she gave a whole lot away and she always felt rich. There's such joy in giving. And I feel sorry for people who don't find that joy in giving. Never stop learning. Never stop having excitement about who you are and where you are. There's always opportunity to tomorrow. And that whatever setback you might face is really just a, there's another door opening if you step forward with it. You know, our reality is what we set in our mind as being reality. It's the journey of life that you, that I think we, we plan and we envision uh, that, that leads us to where we are and to be who we are, really. And we can call it prayer, we can call it the power of intention, uh, but I kind of think there's some sort of power that's beyond us that, that works to lead us in those ways. Jesus, in many cases, is, uh, is my role model, but it's the Jesus of love, compassion, of acceptance. It's not the, necessarily the Jesus painted of believe and salvation. I, I don't really tie into that. It, it's, um, it's not the life hereafter, it's the life now that counts. I think I, I think like I understand Benjamin Franklin, that you live a good life now and that whenever you get there, that's what you accept because we really don't know. So I don't do anything today in anticipation of some judgment in the hereafter.
Did you hear that, honey? <laughs> they asked me, they said, what in my life is I most, what in my life, this is the summary, they said, what in my life am I most proud of? I said, marrying Peggy. <laughs> 